Chemistry, we're on to our second lesson in the equilibrium unit, and this is on rice tables. So equilibrium concentrations can be found if at least one reactant or product are known, as well as an equilibrium constant. So this is done using a rice table, also called an ice table. So the rice stands for reaction, the initial concentration, the change in concentration, and then the equilibrium concentration. A rice table shows the initial beginning concentrations, the change in concentration, and the equilibrium ending concentrations. So let's take a problem here. We're gonna start with two moles of H2 and two moles of I2. They're mixed in a one liter vessel. So that means that it's also, you could say it's two molar of each of those since it's two moles per liter. And we're gonna say it's at 430 degrees. Now the significance of the temperature is that the temperature uh, can't change. If the temperature changes, then the problem, uh, it, it, you can't do the problem. So it, they're just really saying that temperature is constant. Now we're gonna say that the equilibrium constant is 50. So how many moles of HI gas will be present at 430 degrees centigrade? So there you see the equation. It's one mole of H2 plus one mole of I2 produces two moles of HI. Now remember that double arrow means that the reaction can go in both directions. And that's when you have an equilibrium situation is when the reaction can go back and forth. So to solve this problem, we will use a rice table to form an algebraic equation for the equilibrium values H2 I2 and HI. The initial values of H2 and I2 are given up above. No initial value of the product HI is given, so you assume it's zero. So you always do that. If they don't give you a value for the product, assume it's zero. So the value of the temperature is not important. It is only important that the temperature remains constant, as in kinetics problems. So now we're going to put in the initial concentrations. So it's 2.0 for H2. 2.0 for I2, and we're going to say it's zero for HI since we weren't given any value. So we need to calculate the change and then the uh, equilibrium of each reactant and product. So we use a variable X for this unknown. We don't know how much it's changing. That's what we need to figure out. And then using that, we need to figure out what the equilibrium value is in the bottom line. That's what we're really interested in. So we're gonna say that some unknown amount X is, is going to be um, used up of the H2. So you see it's negative one X. You use whatever the coefficient is in front of the reactant up above, uh, that becomes a negative one because you're using up that, it becomes a one. It's the same coefficient, in other words, as the H2. We do the same for I2. The coefficient in front of I2 is one, so it's negative one X. Now the product over on the right side, HI, is being produced. That's going to go up in value, so that's going to be plus 2x. And the 2 is because the coefficient in front of HI is 2. So just remember, whatever goes, what goes in front of the x's is whatever the coefficient of that particular reactant or product is. And if it's a reactant, it's a negative. So now we can form an algebraic expression for the equilibrium down at the bottom. So uh, we know that we, uh, we will consume 1x moles of H2 and I2 and also produce 2x moles of the product HI based on the stoichiometry of the reactions. So those, those coefficients go down there. So we subtract the change row from the initial side and we get uh, we, we add the change row to the initial side of the product side. So we subtract on the reactant side, add to the product side. <clears throat> this produces three algebraic expressions that we can plug into the law of mass action equation to determine the equilibrium values of the reactants and products. So down under H2, we have 2, the initial, minus the change, minus 1x. For I2, same thing, 2 minus 1x. And then for the HI over on the product side, we have 0 plus 2x gives us 2x. So now those are the equilibrium, those are expressions that represent the equilibrium concentrations of each of those uh, reactants and products. So now we plug them in. There's the law of mass action, so be sure you understand how it's written. The products are on the top, 
The coefficient in front of the product HI is the exponent, that's a 2, and then the reactants are down on the bottom, and it's the concentrations of H2 and I2. They have coefficients of 1, so the exponents are 1, and we were given the equilibrium constant, which relates the 2, which is 50. So now we're going to plug in the numbers, or rather the equations, I should say. So for the product, it's going to be 2x up on the top. Down on the bottom, for the H and the H2 and I2, it's going to be 2 minus 1x and 2 minus 1x. So now what we do is we have 2x squared and we have 2 minus 1x also squared. So you can go ahead and, and um, undo those squares by putting a square root, putting them under the square root sign. You do the same thing with the 50. Anything you do to one side, you do to the other. So what we end up with is 7.071, that's the square root of 50, equals 2x over 2 minus x. Now it becomes just an algebra problem. You're going to multiply both sides by 2 minus x, and you get that. So be sure you understand how we got that step. 2 times 7.071 is 14.142, and 7.071 times negative x is going to be negative 7.071x and then over on the right side the 2 minus 1 2 excuse me 2 minus x canceled so now you just have 2x again just algebra at this point and when you solve for x you get 1.6 if you have problems with the algebra come to me for help i mean you have to have basic integrated math two skills to do college chemistry so that's what you did so that's not our final answer the x x equals 1.6 now what the question is how many moles of HI gas so now you have to go up and plug it in to the 2x up in the equilibrium in the lower right corner of the uh, rice table you see a 2x underneath HI that they have to plug that X into the into that equation 2 times 1.6 so we'll do that on the next slide we now use the value of X to compute the equilibrium concentration of HI so that's the 2x comes down there so HI equals 2X, which equals 2 times 1.6, which is 3.2 molar of HI gas. So that's how you figure that out. We, it did, the question didn't ask for it, but we could also figure out the concentration of H2 and I2. It would simply be 2 minus 1.6 would be 0 0.4 for both H2 and I2. Those would be the final equilibrium concentrations for those. Okay, let's take a different example. We have N2O4 is placed in a reaction vessel at a concentration of 2.5 molar. What is the NO2 concentration at equilibrium? Now you notice something interesting here. You're starting off with all products over on the right side of the arrows, N2O4 and no reactants. So why don't they call the N2O4 the reactants and the NO2 the products? Why don't they switch the equation around? You could do that and based on the properties we learned in lesson one, if you did that, if you switch the equation around, you would take the reciprocal of the um, equilibrium constant so that 87.2 would become 1 over 87.2. But it just so happens that they're writing the reaction in this direction. So the law of mass action for the reaction is, and convince yourself that that's correct, the products on the top, N2O4, coefficient is 1, so the exponent is 1. And NO2, the coefficient in front of NO2 in the reaction is 2, so that means the exponent is 2. And that's going to equal the rate constant, excuse me, the, um, the equilibrium constant. So we set up a rice table. So we say we're going to start with zero concentration of NO2 because it didn't tell us we had any. So that's what we're going to assume. We have 2.5 molar of N2O4. Now, what's the change? Think about it. What's the change going to be? Well, first of all, which way is the reaction going to run? It can only run in one direction, and that's from right to left because there's nothing over on the left side of the arrow. So what are we going to do? Let's start with the product side. What are we going to do there? So all of the initial concentration is the product N2O4. This means that the reaction will move backwards from products back to reactants. So now let's answer the question. So you're going to gain 2 times x, some unknown number of molarity, 
times two because the coefficient in front of NO2 is two. So that's plus two X on that side. What's it gonna be over on the right side? See if you can figure that out. It's going to be, it's gonna be minus one X. Okay, because there's a one in front of N2O4. So that's a negative one because that can only be going down in concentration. So you're gonna write your algebraic equations down below for the equilibrium. See if you can do that. So you're gonna get the change is the unknown variable X multiplied by the coefficient in front of each reactant or product. In this reaction, it is the reactant that is increasing and the, pro and the product should be product that is decreasing. Okay, so you end up with zero plus two X is two X and 2.5 minus one X is 2.5 minus one X. We have the equilibriums in terms of the unknown variable X. So now there's the equilibrium equation, the law of mass action with those algebraic expressions plugged in. You convince yourself that that's correct. 2.5 minus X is on the top because that's the product and two X is on the bottom because that's the reactant and it's squared. This, this equation can be turned into a quadratic to find the value of X. Now, before you panic, you're not going to have to do this, but I'm showing you how you would have to solve this normally. So this equation can be turned into a quadratic. So there it is. So now we're gonna square the bottom, two, 2x squared is 4x squared. Okay, now when you multiply both sides by 4x squared, then over on the left side, you're gonna get 87.2 times 4x squared. That's gonna give you 348.8x squared. Over on the right side, the 4x squared will cancel out, so you'll have 2.5 minus x. Now you're gonna subtract 2.5 from the from the right side and add X to the right side. So you're basically gonna move it over to the left side. And you'll end up with this quadratic equation, 348.8 X squared plus X minus 2.5. The only way to solve that is to use the quadratic formula. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. There's the quadratic formula. Plug in the numbers, just confirm that you understand that. And you get 0 0.083. Now I wanna reiterate, you don't ever have to use the quadratic formula and you're gonna learn why in just the next few slides. Okay, but that is the value of X. So the alternate value for X is a negative number. Remember when you do quadratics, you usually get two values for X and you can't have a negative concentration so you can eliminate the other value. You go up back up to the values of NO2 and it's 2x and the, the equilibrium value of NO2 is 2x. You just calculated what x is, 0 0.083. So two times that equals 0.166. That's the equilibrium concentration of NO2. And over on the right side, you have 2.5 minus 0 0.083, the value of x, and that gives you 2.417. So you've calculated the equilibrium values and that's the end of the problem. Fortunately, there's an easier way to solve the previous problem based on the approximation that can be made when a large and small number are added or subtracted. So if you added 1 million and 5, you get 1 million plus 5 is 1 million and 5. Well, you have to go out to the seventh significant figure to find a difference between a million and 5 and a million. In other words, they're effectively the same number. So but you can go ahead when you're adding a very or subtracting a very small number to a very large number, you can ignore the very small number. So we can basically say that a million plus five is pretty much equal to a million. It really didn't change it that much. And because you can eliminate that five, that's going to save us a lot of trouble in doing these problems. So since you needed to go to the seventh significant figure to see the difference, we could approximate one million and five as equaling one million. This is not true when you multiply though. A million times five is five million. There's a huge difference between one million and five million. So if it's a multiplication with a small number, you can't ignore that. But if it's an addition or subtraction, you can ignore the small number. There is a significant difference between one million and five million. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same problem using a simplifying assumption here. We will return to the law of mass action for the previous problem. 
So now the simplifying assumption is this. If we assume that x is much smaller than 2.5, so look at the equation down there on the left, 2.5 minus x. If x is very small, then we can eliminate x in the numerator, leaving only 2.5. Just like we could add or subtract 5 to 1 million, we could ignore the 5. So that's what you do, and that's how you avoid having to use the quadratic formula. So now we're going to go ahead and, and take the equation you see on the right and we're going to solve that. So we cannot eliminate the x and the 2x squared because that's a multiplication. We said even if it's a small number, you can't eliminate that. So now we can solve the equation without using the quadratic equation. Uh, this is called the simplifying assumption for equilibrium problems. You can use it in almost any equilibrium problem we do in this class. I'm just going to tell you, you're never going to have to use the quadratic formula uh, in the future. Okay, so there's the formula again. Okay, so we multiply both sides. 2x squared is 4x squared. You multiply both sides by 4x squared and you get 348.8x squared equals 2.5. And now it's just a simple division, x squared equals 2.5 divided by 348.8, and that gives you x equals 0.85. Remember in our previous problem where we used the quadratic formula, x was 0.83. So that's only a difference of two one thousandths. It's hardly any difference at all by using the when we use the simplifying assumption versus when we actually calculated it using the quadratic formula. So there's something called the 5% rule. The 5% rule states that if the percentage difference between the answer for x, and that's 0 0.085, and the initial concentration, which was 2.5, is less than 5%, then the simplifying assumption can be used. So you don't really know that until you've already done the calculation, then you go back and check. So 0 0.085, what we came up with here for x, divided by 2.5 times 100 equals 3.4%. So the simplifying assumption gives an answer differing by less than 5% from the initial concentration. So the simplifying assumption, that is to say, eliminating that X can be used. Okay, here's another example. We've got a closed system containing 1 times 10 to the negative 3 molar I2 and 2 times 10 to the negative 3 molar H2. Again, the temperature just means it's going to stay constant um, and it's allowed to reach equilibrium. Analysis of the equilibrium equilibrium mixture shows that the equilibrium concentration of HI is 1.87 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. So calculate KC. So this time you're given actually an equilibrium concentration for HI, not an initial concentration. So it's kind of like a little puzzle filling in the boxes here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have 1, 1 times 10 to the negative 3 for, eight for, I, uh, for I2. We have 2.0 times 10 to the negative 3 for H2. And then for HI, uh, we don't have any initial concentration, but we are given an equilibrium concentration of 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3. So that goes down in the equilibrium line. So you got to do a little backwards algebra here. So you're given two initial concentrations and an equilibrium concentration. When no initial concentration of the product is given, you can assume that it is zero. That's always true. So here we go. So if we started with zero HI and we ended up at equilibrium with 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3, then that means the change must have been 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3. And we've, if we express that in terms of X like we did on the previous problems, then that means that the 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3 represents 2X because there's a 2 coefficient in front of HI. So if that's 2x, 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3, then x would be half that number. So since you know the initial and equilibrium values of hi, you can calculate the change. So that's what we just did, 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3. Since 2 molar of HI is produced for every 1 molar of H2 or I2 that is consumed, then half as many molar uh, of the reactants is consumed, so we just divide 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3 times 2, 
and there we do it right there you see it and you get 0.935 times 10 to the negative 3 molar for H2 it goes right there that would be a minus X and you get the same thing for I2 and that would be a minus I so now you can calculate the equilibrium values just a simple subtraction of scientific notation numbers and you get the equilibrium for H2 so both of these reactants are decreasing in value so a negative sign is placed in front of them in the change row So now you can subtract the change of each reactant from the initial concentration to find the equilibrium concentration and complete the table. So there we go. We're just doing 1 times 10 to the negative 3 minus 0.935 times 10 to the negative 3. Uh, remember, when you subtract or add scientific notation, the base and exponent must be the same, 10 to the negative 3 in this case. So that gives you 0 0.65, 0 0.065 times 10 to the negative 3. And then over under I2, it's going to be 2.0 times 10 to the negative 3 minus 0.935 times 10 to the negative 3. And that gives you 1.065 times 10 to the negative 3. So now you have all three of your equilibrium concentrations of products and reactants. So Kc can be computed by entering the equilibrium concentrations into the law of mass action. So there's the law of mass action over there on the left. Be sure you understand how it was written. Hi squared over H2 concentration times I2 concentration. And you just plug in the numbers at the equilibrium uh, on the equilibrium line down on the bottom of the rice table. So it's 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3 squared over 0 0.065 times 10 to the negative 3 times 1.065 times 10 to the negative 3 and you get 51. So that's the equilibrium constant. There's no units of measure on an equilibrium constant. And that takes care of our lesson on rice tables. You'll get a lot of practice on these in this unit and also in our next unit on acids and bases. We'll use them quite a bit.